Support the Amigos podcast and keep the Amiga goodness flowing for just a dollar a month. Visit our page at patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Amiga, the first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Amigos, the podcast about everything Amiga. Amigos is a proud member of the Throwback Network, your home for quality retro podcasts. And now, here are your hosts, Aaron Dowdy and John Bodokar Schaller. Hi, and welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And we are back. Uh, last week, I hope you enjoyed our interview uh, with Rob Flack O'Hara. Uh, it was really fun to talk to him about his memories of the Amiga, but we are back with another game. This week, we're going to talk about Lemmings. Oh, yeah. But before we start, we have some feedback that uh, we need to go through. Even I haven't heard this yet, so yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, this is. we had some hot action on the Facebook oh, page. I don't know about that. <laughs> Holy moly, I could get on there more. Uh, Kevin Anderson um, wrote in to talk about, um, it's called Icarus, I think is what it's actually called, but it's I-C-A-R-O-S. Uh, and it's a fork of AROS, which is a crowdsourced operating system that aims to be Amiga compatible at the API level. So this is another uh, kind of alternative operating system that emulates the Amiga. But I guess um, because it integrates with the Amiga at the API level, um, it doesn't depend on emulation to the extent that the uh, the Morph OS does. I oh. guess it's more integrated. It's still emulated, but it's not um, emulated in a separate program. I guess it has more. He, he calls it a more integrated Amiga emulation environment. It sounds like some heady stuff right there, but yeah. And basically, it does the same thing that Morph OS does with old um, PowerPC, you know, G4, G3 processors. It does the same thing for uh, x86 processors. Hmm. So um, you know, it's it's the same same deal. You you put it, you install it on a Windows compatible device as your operating system, and um, it comes very close to a click and run experience for uh, 68k Amiga programs. So I thought that was pretty cool, and it's also crowdsourced, so it's free, which wow. is a good plus. That sounds like some that sounds like some complicated stuff. <laughs> I like a, a turn Amiga on, put disk in drive. A little hand comes up. That's a, that's the extent of it. That's all I need, man. But that sounds cool. I mean, if you've got to, if you want to do some big time Amiga stuff with a faster processor, that sounds pretty pretty awesome. Right, and they have uh, full like you know programs for this thing. They've got web browsers. They've even got it to play YouTube videos, which I guess was a huge deal because you know YouTube is operating on all these you know more contemporary protocols that I'm sure are very expensive so, to engineer into a web browser that you've built from scratch. Does that browser like HTML5 support? That's what I'm guessing. Um, that is snazzy, nice, isn't it? And uh, so I was I was reading about that, and I'll post a link in the show notes to uh, to this uh, to this Icarus Icarus. I don't know. You can correct me. Icarus, man. Yeah. You know, well, flew too high. Yeah. That was him, right? Um, it's kind of a weird name for your operating system. You don't want to crash and burn like he did. Well. <laughs> anyway, uh, now it's time for my favorite episode, uh, my favorite segment of each episode, the uh, the Kickstarter segment. Oh, so here we go. We've got, um, we've got some old friends and some new ones. Um, the first one's a new one. We've got uh, Amiga-inspired keycaps <clears throat> for mechanical keyboards. So, do you remember the old mechanical keyboards back in the day? The, the, old, the clicky ones? Yeah, the love clicky them, ones. Love them, love them. So, those are still continue to be huge among certain segments of the, the gaming and uh, retro community. They know, get they, a feel, man. Yeah. They get a, and they get a distinctive sound. I love them. I used to use them at the job. I had an old one I adapted up to where I could use it. It was great. And uh, now, if you wanted to, you could replace <clears throat> your uh, Windows system keys with Amiga keycaps. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you pledge about 12 bucks. Um, you can get two high quality keys. You can get um, orange, beige, a whole bunch of different colors. Uh, you'll receive one left Amiga A printed in black and one right Amiga A printed in black. Um, so this project has 17 backers so far, and uh, it's got $2,300 pledged of uh, $9,000 on their goal. That's so wacky that I love it. It is. It's Amiga keycaps. When you said that, I was like, what's this guy talking about? Amiga keycaps for your Windows. You just take the Windows keys off or whatever and put the Amiga. 
that's that how would you be know, a conversation you know, if, starter. Yeah, if you if you work in a development environment or with other dudes, you know, or other ladies, and uh, you want some cred. You know, some somebody cred. walks by your some desk and sees, sees, sees your uh, sees your Amiga keycaps. They'll know. They'll know. <laughs> they'll know this guy has a specially molded top for his Amiga back at the house. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he knows what Icarus is way more than we do. Um, and now we come to uh, the Kickstarter that we talk about almost every week, the A1200 <laughs> Kickstarter um, for the, uh, the, the, the devil. Yeah, the case molds. Uh, they are doing much better this time. Oh, okay. Uh, they've got 40 days left, so they've still got a while, but they've got uh, $80,000 plus. Wow. So and how much do they halfway need? Halfway through. They need 140 Yeah, come on. Let's push these guys over the top, for God's sake. I'd sakes. like to see them do it. Just give them money so we don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> right. And we're not even affiliated with these guys. It's a good idea. We're, it is well, especially you know the um, the uh, it's a shame. Maybe they'll do one for the uh, the five hundred yeah. <laughs> uh, after yeah. after this one because uh, we're getting ready to set up a five hundred here in my basement, and um, it needs a new case. <laughs> so. Yeah, sorry, my cat. I've got boats. Got my uh, loaner coming online, and unfortunately, the loaner fell off the top of a bookcase thanks to my cats, and the top broke. <laughs> so unfortunately, it still works. Um. We have some more feedback from Sean from oh the Pie Factory podcast. Oh. And uh, he says that uh, Pinball Dreams and Pinball Fantasies are both available on iOS. So if you have uh, you know, an iPad or an iPhone. Um, and he said that on the party table on Pinball Fantasies, he actually scored over 100 million points. Holy smokes. Which is uh, pretty crazy. Are they the, is the scoring the same on the iOS yeah. versions? Yeah. He Holy said, mackerel. He, he said it was, it was his highest ever video game score, I guess, across every game. You know, 100 million points. You know... Along those lines, I don't have I don't have any Apple stuff, but uh, I know the the uh, UAE emulator is available on on the Android platform. I don't know about I'm just, I don't know what the scoop is on the iOS, and I've heard that this that uh, Amiga stuff works pretty well on the Android side. And uh, so I mean, if you're really wanting to play this stuff, and also there's always the Super Nintendo version, you could always throw that down on an emulator uh, and, and give it a shot. But uh, you know, eh, if you can't get the iOS version, you want to try something else. I mean. I'm not saying go out and cheat, but I'm sure there's a way to legally do it, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, and hey, they they hold up, you know, yeah. like I said. And these, I mean, these are not expensive games. They're both $3. Oh, yeah, that's a great, so, I would have those instantly. Yeah. I wonder if they've got them set up to where you can play them. Oh, know. I'm sure you can do either portrait or landscape. See, now that's something would be, that would be sweet, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. Um, and because they've they've totally well they've they've redone the art. It's not like you're playing an emulator. They've made it look a little bit more 3D. I imagine it looks kind of similar to what they've done with the tables and virtual pinball. Oh, I see. So this is like a, a, a reimagining of the right. Uh, right. It's not just a straight. Have board. you have you seen these? Yeah, you, they look great. Have you do you have these? You got you got Apple not phone. bought them, but uh, I did I did look at their page on iTunes when I was getting the links, and uh, I'm gonna get I'm probably gonna get Pinball Dreams because I, I enjoyed that one so much. Hey, you know, while we're on the subject, this is uh, uh, something I was just noticed. If anyone is into uh, Steam, I noticed that they, uh, and by the time you hear this, well, they'll still be going on. They're having one of their, uh, they're one of the sales, the Humble Bundle sales. And it's like a retro sale. Uh, and one of the games on it is, guess what? That remastered Wings that we were talking really? about a couple weeks ago. And the whole thing, you can get like, it's like uh, seven games for like three bucks, right? It's keys. Get this, folks. This game's great. If you like the original Wings, this is a great, great game. I mean, they didn't screw anything up, and trust me, I hate everything that they remaster or remake, and this was really good. Plus, you get a bunch of other uh, interesting titles that I can't remember them all off the top of my head. That's the one that really caught my eye. Hey, for three bucks, you're getting a bargain right there. So that's something you might want to look into if you're an old Amiga head. CinemaWare Wings, the remastered version. Like I said, just go to the Humble Bundle website, and it's the one that's up right now. Huh, awesome. Um Continuing on with uh, Sean's email, uh, he said that uh, that was his highest score until he discovered Warblade. Have you heard of Warblade before? Yes, I have. Warblade, as I recall, uh, it was the same guy that did Deluxe Galaga uh, did it. It was like the PC version. Um, I've played it. It was. I had a copy, and it wouldn't work on Windows XP, I believe it was when I tried using it. It might be, I think it was XP. I could never, it never would run. I've played it way, way back. I don't remember much about it. I know it was highly touted, 
Uh, so, but I think isn't it the same guy did? Deluxe yeah, it is. It, you're, you're exactly right. And uh, and he said, make sure you listen to Pie Factory episode 15 to be released soon for more information on that. Uh, but he has a game cool. in progress right now on Warblade on iOS that is in the multiple billions. Wow! <laughs> so. I always heard I always heard Warblade was cool. Like I said, I'm sure I've played it, but I played the heck out of Deluxe Galaga, mm-hmm. and Deluxe Galaga is a is a, is a very popular game. Oh, I'm sure and, we'll uh, get that on so, the podcast. Yeah, at some and, point. and so and the gentleman that made it, I think he, I think the guy that made him just recently passed away. You're right. All of everything that you're saying, he wrote in his <laughs> in his email. It's like he read it before. <laughs> um, yeah, Edgar Vigdal um, is his name. I'm sure I mispronounced his last name, but he he was recently deceased. Um, and uh, but anyway, uh, thanks, Sean, for your yeah. uh, for your email. And uh, I think we're going to be interviewing Sean for the uh, the podcast coming up here in a little bit. So uh, that'll be uh, that'll be real fun. I uh, yeah, I believe that the uh, that the that the fella uh, that, that just passed away was also working on a Kickstarter to get move either Galaga or Warblade or something new to uh, the phones. I don't know if whatever happened to it. Uh, I'll look into it. So, But uh, that might be a way to play him. Would you like to comment on this week's episode? Did John and Aaron finally make their first mistake? Leave us a comment at our blog at amigospodcast.com. All right, Aaron, the game of this week is Lemmings. All righty. Lemmings was released in 1991 for the Amiga, first for the Amiga. It oh, yes. originally appeared on the platform first. Uh, it was published by Psygnosis. <laughs> it was developed by DMA Design. <laughs> um, those are all great names. Yeah, the Amiga. yeah those, are, those are classic names in the Amiga scene. Um Mike Daly, the first employee of DMA Design uh, and one of the programmers for Lemmings, uh, published an article called The Lemmings Story. And uh, a lot of this information comes from that. It's very interesting. I'm going to put a link to it in the show notes. Uh, if you're at all interested in Lemmings uh, and also kind of the history of DMA at the same time, it's, it's a fascinating read. Um, but it's funny. Did you know that Lemmings and Blood Money are connected well, DMA, I know that. Right, but do you know they're they're connected on an even more, um, even more personal way? I, I don't. Fill me in, Boat. So what happened was they were working on a game. They were beginning a game called Walker, which yep, is yep. based on the Walker that was used in Blood Money. It's an interesting game. And uh, they wanted to make an animation of a of a creature that could that could be in this game. And so this guy came up with this wild, you know, little dude walking around. And uh, he was, uh, and one of the guys saw it, and he said, "Hey, I bet there's a game just in that little thing." And so uh, mm-hmm. they they looked at the sprite and they said, "Well, you know, maybe we could, we could call it Lemmings." And uh, with the color choice, I thought this was interesting. Um, they the reason why they chose the colors was because of the PC EGA palette. That's why they have green hair. And you know the kind of pale skin and blue, you know. Really, whatever. so yeah. so they had early on they'd planned to port this to the PC, right. which I thought was interesting because it, you know as we said it did debut on the Amiga, but they knew they were going to have to port it to the PC at some point. That so. makes sense because EGA was a pretty limited. That's awesome, right? right. And, and you know it's funny I, I I never really thought about the Walker things being in Blood Money, but they were. Yeah, I played Walker, and the fact that that's how they came up with isn't that wild? Walker, I doubt many people remember that game, but it's hard to, it's hard to believe that that's what it, that kicked off the whole Lemmings thing, which was a craze back in the day. Yeah, yeah, and um, basically the the way that they developed this once they figured out, hey, we're going to have these little characters, you know, that we can put so, a billion of them on the screen. We're going to try and move them from one place to another. They're each going to have jobs and basically everybody at dma you know would try and make up levels you know and they'd send these levels to psygnosis and psygnosis would fax back they'd say hey you know we were able to complete this one and they'd actually write out how they were able to do it and uh, they said some of the best feedback that they got was where they'd get these faxes that were you know handwritten pieces of paper and they'd have things crossed out because they'd say well we did it oh it didn't work you know and they had to cross it out and um so it, it just seemed like it was a really fun game to develop. Um, the uh, the music uh, was created by uh, another member of the team, Brian Johnson, 
who had uh, at first he'd sampled bits of copyrighted music, and uh, unfortunately that did not get to stay in the uh, the la- the the uh, the final game. But there is a lot of um, public domain music in Lemmings. Did you notice any familiar tunes when you were when you were playing? Yeah, I did. I believe I remember a uh, popcorny a popcorny sort of uh, tune. Uh, uh, so like an Ave Maria type thing was going on on one level. Uh, uh, so yeah, I could there definitely I could see what you're talking about. And, and the music was, it wasn't what I would call spectacular, but it was it's exactly what you need for this game. You don't want something that's going to overpower your right. the gameplays or going bananas. It's it's perfect because you need something you need to think. Well, this is what exactly. You're you know, actually, this has been one of my favorite Amiga music soundtracks because. It doesn't have a lot of what I like to call Euro techno dance trash, which a lot of oh Amiga my. music is. He it's said it, folks. That driving bass, that driving, you know, drum. It's I guess it's fine if you're into that sort of thing, but uh, this is a little bit more melodic. Uh, and just listen to this list of tunes that he uses. So he uses um, the Orpheus in the Underworld, which is the Can Can, uh, something from Swan Lake. Uh, London Bridge is falling down, <laughs> and my favorite, the Carol Old Little Town of Bethlehem, mixed with the melody from the film The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, there's a lot of tunes in this too, yeah. so they 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 don't repeat that much. Yeah, either. yeah, almost every ep- every level that I every played, one I played, I don't think I heard a single repeat. Yeah. But I didn't get super far. So I mean, I, I love it when when um, developers take the time to make a soundtrack that you know is is varied, and, and this this game delivers. Um, so, uh, now did you ever play on the Amiga? Did you ever play the two player version of Lemmings? Sure. Oh yeah. I, have I played it with another person? Yeah. I think me and my brother may have given that a shot. Uh, but it I, mostly it was me playing by myself almost entirely actually. Because the, you know, the Amiga. You had to have two mice. That yeah. Was the Amiga was the only system that supported that. Originally they figured out a way to do it with a null modem cable. You could go back and forth between two machines and actually see the other person's mouse, you know, on your screen in real time. They ended up uh, dumping that, but they did keep the two-player option because the Amiga did support two mice inputs at once. Uh, however, the PC, for example, did not. Um, so if you had the Amiga version, you definitely had the, the best version. Um Of course. Yeah. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. The Atari ST version managed to retain it, too. Oh, okay. So there is that, that too. Still Amiga's better. Yeah, yeah. Um, Now, did you know that Lemmings, there was an arcade port of Lemmings that was developed? I do seem to have heard that. Did it? How did it actually get produced? It was never actually produced. It seems like I. I think there's. Was there a cabinet mocked up for it? Yeah. Um. It went. It was pretty far along in development. It was going to be developed, or it was going to be published by Data East. Um. It was controlled with a joystick or a trackball. Um. But it, well, I guess it was still in the very early stages when it was canceled, according to this Lemmings uh, story. He says that uh, he still has the original prototype. Um, and uh, the fast forward version in Lemmings Two, it came from the arcade, uh, the arcade version. Oh, okay. So that's a good idea too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the Lemmings was released in uh, in ninety one in um, in North America and the EU. Uh, the Atari ST and the DOS versions fo- followed <laughs> in ninety one. Uh, what I thought was interesting is that it, you know it came out of course for every other system yes. you know between ninety one and ninety four or so, um, but the Commodore sixty four port wasn't released until nineteen ninety three. It didn't come out until two years later, hmm. and I mean two years to wait for a port isn't a long time. But think about buying a new Commodore sixty four game in nineteen ninety three. I'll be honest, with you, I didn't know they even released the sixty four version. I'm surprised to hear that. I mean that's got to be one of the latest releases, one of the latest major releases for the system. Now ninety three. That guy didn't. It Get re- Lemmings got released to pretty much all the consoles, didn't mm-hmm. it, as well? Yeah, Super Nintendo. Definitely all the 16-bit consoles, probably the Game Boy. Um, you know, I'm sure that, the you know, almost everything probably. Would you say it's it. the most successful Amiga debuted game to ever hit? I Either mean, that or, or Worms. 
I'd say this was bigger than worms, though. It didn't have the longevity, but, I mean, it was awful huge when it hit. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably, Lemmings was probably a bigger hit out of the gate, but it didn't have the longevity. That I mean, worms Shadow does. of the Beast got released on a bunch of systems. And it wasn't like Lemmings, so I don't think. I mean, it, no, I mean, yeah. Lemmings was huge. Yeah. It was, I mean, when it came out, I was, I couldn't believe how big it got, you know. Yeah, you might be right about that. So that's crazy to think about, though. Lemmings, <laughs> something they made off of a little moving guy, and it's their biggest hit. Right, right. Um, and uh, speaking of the, uh, you know, the, 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 another connection between lemmings and worms, did you notice that when your lemmings blow up, they explode in almost exactly the same way that worms explode? You know, they make yeah. a little crater in the ground and little particles come up. What, what, what was, was the first year worms came out? I wonder. I wonder if they, worms was ninety four. So I this think. actually predates it. Yeah, yeah. I looked that up because I wasn't sure which one was was newer. Hmm. Um. So uh, let's get into actually our our uh, time playing lemmings. Uh, I got off to kind of a frustrating start because I couldn't get the music to work, or so I thought, because the title screen popped up. And I saw all these options for music and everything. And I was like, I don't hear anything. What's going on? And it wasn't until I started the game that I realized that there is just no music on the title screen, right. which annoyed me. What did you What did you think of the of the of the intro? I got to be honest with you. I think I might have skipped it. I didn't know there the was intro one. is is cute. Is it? It's it's a bunch of uh, lemmings. They're climbing up stuff, and they're uh, you know they're doing lemming stuff. They're very cute. They're mm -hmm. blown up. It's like animated. Is it an animated thing? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, one eventually a lemming climbs, and it shows them doing their various sort of jobs. And eventually a, a, a lemming climbs to the very top of this grass. It looks like the top of a tree, and he he just stands there and looks. And the camera pans out, and he's, they've climbed the lemmings. Lemmings, the word. Oh, cool. the logo. It's really cute. And then something else I noticed that I thought was just, I mean, again, attention to detail. The title screen is great, The uh, where you pick your options and everything. There's little lemmings hanging off the sides, and they're blinking and looking mm -hmm. around. I just like that sort of stuff. It's a, it, it, it's a, someone paid attention and cared enough to put the little bonus stuff in. Yeah. And it made it nice. And it's uh, uh, it's actually the setup's pretty good. It's all password-driven, mm -hmm. the levels, uh, which is odd for a computer. But I'm assuming they probably did it for ease of porting to another system. Well, I, there's that also to, pr to protect floppies. I guess mm -hmm. because they didn't want you to, they didn't want the right to that floppy. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing another, that's probably yeah. part of it. Yeah, uh, it works. You know, you had to write the password down, but it works. I was thinking about, you know, I think a lot of Amiga games were developed with people thinking about, you know, how are we going to make this. You know, it's kind of like they're writing for the, the best in class from the beginning and they're going to port down to the other systems because I think especially, at the, you know, getting into the 90s, I think that developers started to realize that because of piracy and because of, you know, the, the Amiga not selling in the numbers that a lot of competing systems were, that they were going to need to start, you know, port these games in a very rapid fashion. Yeah, I don't know how much... Uh I don't know how much porting Psygnosis had done to that point. I, I, again, I, I'd have to look at the timetable for Psygnosis when they, you know, some of their, some of their bigger hits came out. But uh, uh, you're probably right. Maybe that's the point where they were like, "Yeah, we got to start setting ourselves up." Especially if you look at even what they were talking about with the EGA with the palette on the on the PC, that they knew their limitations. It's it actually when you hear that, kind of it's kind of sad because if if a lot of games are like that, it would make you wonder what the Amiga game would have looked sure. like if they'd not had to bother with that sort mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's uh, Psygnosis, they had a, a pedigree of good games. And I remember when I saw this come out, and again, this in DMA too, I was like, okay, this is going to be a quality game. You just knew, you knew pretty much out of the gate, you're not going to get crap uh, just from just from those two companies being involved. But um, I'm going to make a, uh, a stunning um, hypothesis to you. Okay? All right, stun me, man. I think Lemmings is the first re real-time strategy game. I have to ponder that. It, it's definitely a real-time strategy. There's no doubt about that. Was it the first? Ninety. There's got to be something that predates it from the, in the eighties, surely. Well, you've got to think. You know, games. You know, systems had to come to a certain point where you could do things like this in real time. Right. Um, and I just don't think that there's another game where you can assign worker actions in real time while workers are doing different things before Lemmings. The thing, I, I don't know. I mean, I can't think of any, but that doesn't mean... 
I, I know we're, the reader or the listeners are going to be they're probably banging their heads against <laughs> the radio, just screaming out things. Because I do that all the time. Uh, you know, hey, by the way, if you're out there, send us. You know, if you think of something that predates Lemmings, I'd like to. You know, have something to ponder. There's a lot of games I hear about that I never played, so I don't know how they like little computer people and stuff like that. Or, uh, I mean, like Sim City, isn't that sort of a real time thing? No, those, those aren't. I mean, think about what real time strategy games are. They're like Warcraft or like was that Command and Conquer? Was Command that real? Conquer. Yeah, yeah. Those aren't like Sim City or little computer people's not even. I haven't played Sim City for a long time. I can't remember. I can't remember how, how it played. I'm trying to think of, I, I don't know. You might be onto something. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the first one. Um, so, uh, like Aaron said, if you if you know of another game that would qualify before then, then keep it to yourself. Make me right. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> let us know uh, because I, I'd like to check it out because I, I I've always kind of admired real time strategy games from afar. I've never been skilled enough to play them well, but I'd like to check out earlier ones than lemmings just to see how the genre has evolved um it's kind of funny i immediately tried to do modern things like you can do in rts's like click and drag boxes around multiple units to change them you know yeah. of course none of that stuff works was the scrolling of the screen um but it's still pretty impressive how you know you can you, you you pick a role for the lemming you just click on the guy and he starts doing it you know there's no there's no lag no matter how many lemmings are on the screen what about the lost vikings I think that was or after did that posts. Okay, that's the only one of that yeah. era. I was trying to think of yeah, one. Yeah, I think that came out in 92. Hmm. All right. Um, let's see. The uh, The big appeal for me is uh, just the, the action that's on the screen. When you've got six billion lemmings, you know, going everywhere. They're, you know, going back and forth with each other. They're all doing different things. It's just cool. It's cool to know that you have control over each one of those lemmings. And if you want them to do something, they, they'll do it. It's amazing that you could that they could render that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> it's amazing the, the amount of crazy action that can happen is unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And I'd sat there and playing it. I hadn't played Lemmings. I I w- I'd played it back in the day, and I haven't fired it up for years and years and years. I mentioned that last week, two weeks ago. And I'll tell you, it was like putting on a, an old comfortable shoe. I just hopped right back in it. That game was way ahead of its time. Yeah, you know, and it. Uh, was a well planned, well thought out, and perfectly executed video game. Mm. I mean, it did a really good job. Everything, the graphics are nice. Everything's exactly as nice as it needs to be to get all the action on the screen. And uh, uh, it's a, such a simple concept too. When you think about how simple it is, get your guys from point A to point B, and they give you the options. And it's 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 a lot of fun. And there are different ways to do stuff. Uh, it's amazing to me that. Uh, we haven't seen much. I haven't can't think of too many games that are like it. You know, can you that have really come along to Pike? Uh, I mean, you know, they they sort of invented. Um, there's a game called Trine. I don't know if you've heard of it. I've played Trine actually. Um, that that kind of reminds me because you've got different people doing different roles to traverse a level. Mm-hmm. But as far as having just the amount of stuff, you know, the amount of sprites on the screen trying to accomplish, I think it's unique. I think it's the only game like and it. it's. It's manic. It can be. It it cannot be. It can be slow, but it can also. It's so. It can be so action packed that you can't. There were a few levels that was just. Are you. It's funny how attached you get these little idiots. <laughs> I would feel so bad if I wasn't paying attention. And you just start hearing them splat somewhere. They jumped off something, or fell in fire, mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, um, <laughs> they do a good job of sort of making you feel bad, but then again, there's something. There's something very. Um, uh, there's something there's a warm and fuzzy feeling you get when you blow them all up. Mm. It, the, the the visual is cool, you know that they all just there's little particles shoot everywhere and they all scream, grab their heads. It's 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 very fun. Yeah, it's very cartoony. I remember doing that over and over back when I f- first got it, just because <laughs> I'd show my friends, watch this, and we'd get them all over the screen and blow them up. And it was it was hilarious, you know. But uh, it's I really enjoyed it. I, I don't know about you, but I mean, and I'm not a puzzle guy mm-hmm. per se. I like Tetris, right? But uh, uh, I, I played the heck out of this game, and I thought I told myself I'll play it a few times, and then, and then uh, you know until I get annoyed and I'll quit. And I would get annoyed, and I would have to keep playing. And I stayed up so late on a work night <laughs> playing with this one night uh, this week, and so it's definitely going back in my rotation. I can tell you that. Yeah, I think one of the things that made this game so successful is that the the the, um, the difficulty curve 
is so uh it's not steep you know it really eases you in the first 10 levels or so i mean anybody could beat them but at the same time you know you're figuring out the game and you're not getting frustrated so when the difficulty does start to ramp up you don't immediately feel overwhelmed and shut it off yeah and another thing i thought about this that was brilliant about this game and this uh, uh, another amiga thing is that you 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 don't need a uh, language you don't need any words mm-hmm. the way they did it was very clever uh, they knew these games were going to be shipped into a lot of countries. Easy as pie. Knock it out. Any Anyone from any country could play this. It's all visual. And uh, the and the control is good. Uh, the, the mouse, again, a, unique to the Amiga at the time, was that sweet mouse control. Uh, it, for this game, can you imagine trying to play this with a joystick? Uh, I, I mean, I'm sure... Well, yeah, I actually did. You on know, the, when on I played the Super it on Nintendo? The, yeah, on the Super Nintendo. I, playing how it did it D-pad. play on there? You know that you just move the cursor with the with the mouse. You just can't move it nearly as... Or with the with the D-pad, you can't move it nearly as fast. I can't even imagine giving it... I mean, did they slow the game down for the... It's been a while since I played it, but I did play it a lot on the Super Nintendo. Um, I don't think I ever got... I was. I don't think I ever got to the point where the speed was an issue. Um, I think that you could you, you could pause. Maybe you could pause the game in a sign. You know, while the game was paused. I'm trying to. I'm trying to remember, but I think they they came up with something. So they could, to get basically, away you that. could make it. A temporarily turn base for a <laughs> right, <laughs> and that may be totally false, and I just made that up. But I don't seem to recall it being an issue. But the mouse is a billion times better. That reminds me, I love the pause button on the uh, on the Amiga version. I guess they're all like that with the two paws. You know, I, <laughs> so I, it clever. took me a while to figure that out. I was like, what, footprints? What? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, the, the, <laughs> very cute. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, I loved it. Again, you know, another game I hate to gush over a lot of Amiga games, but this was a great game. I mean, I know it spawned a million sequels. I remember when the Christmas version came, I was so happy. I played the heck out of that. I don't know if you ever played that. I, I saw it on Lumen Amiga, but I, yeah. I didn't dive into They've, it. Uh, they, it was fun. It was Christmas themed stuff. It was a lot of fun. And then there was uh, Lemmings 2. I think I don't know more Lemmings. They, they released a ton of sequels to Tribes. I believe it was a Lemmings mm-hmm. Tribes. I probably played them all uh, to a certain degree, but I probably spent more time with the first one than I did any other ones. Well, um, I guess that that's, that's all that really needs to be said for yeah. Lemmings. Uh, Go play this. Play the heck out of it. Yeah, we, uh, we're going to do a stream of it as soon as we finish the podcast. How, how far did you get? Did you pay attention to how, what level you finally gave up on? Well, I skipped around a lot. I did some of the easy, some of the tricky, some of the mayhem. Um, so I, I didn't play it in a linear way. I probably should have so we could have compared. But uh, I, rolled, how, how I, I rolled on to level 16. And then I really hit the wall. Mm. That level was up again. I tried for hours, and I I, I feel like an idiot because I remember when I was younger, I could, I think I maybe put, beat all the levels. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I played for a, a lot, but you know, it's, I guess I'm losing my touch, <laughs> you know. But uh, uh, a tremendous game, and I remember uh, last last time we met, we talked about the uh, Amiga Mouse. This would be a great game to get something like that. Something that was even, even more precise. It'd be a lot. The old my mouse is getting kind of long in the twos. Mm-hmm. You know, I was like, boy, this would be a good time to have that new mouse. Yeah, so. yeah. Get that thousand DPI or yeah, whatever it, it'd it is. Yeah, it'd be sweet. Um, well, uh, what are we going to do next week? Um, do sports. Sports. All right. We haven't done in a sports game with the Amiga yet. Uh, so Aaron and I have chosen to do uh, TV sports basketball. From cine- from uh, uh, bleh, I saw my brain just melted on me. Cinemaware. Cinemaware. Uh, one of the titans of uh, Amiga development. Yes, we love these guys. And so we'll see how this game stands up. Sports, we haven't played it. I can't believe we haven't played any sports games, but we're not really that sporty, are we? No. I mean, it may it may be difficult by looking at our physique to tell it. To, now, to, now wait a minute. Does the wrestling game count as sports? I think that does that count as a game for that matter? <laughs> yeah, there, there's a deeper question there. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, thanks everybody for listening. Uh, if you have any game suggestions, uh, please feel free to write in because uh, we want to we want to play some of your guys' favorite games too. And uh, we want you to play along with us and, and write your comments about the games and too. your scores or whatever. Everything. Yeah, that'd be great. Give us give us some hints, guys. It's been a long time since I played this stuff, and boats very uh, seldom played any of them. Mm-hmm. So if you got something you wanted to hear us uh, talk about, you know, drop us a line. All right. Well, until next time. Adios. adios.